pray the Lord, God is good. We shall never tire to say God is good. We shall never tire to say God cares. We shall never tire to say he loves us. And so I welcome you once again to our sessions. And this time we are going to talk about a man, a man called Thomas, and popularly known as the Doubting Thomas. The man that was not present when Jesus Christ made his appearances. And remember the Bible mentions in Acts 1, 3, that after Jesus' resurrection, he went about, um, you know, revealing himself, showing himself, proving himself alive. And on one of the appearances, and not just one, not twice, but severally. And so on the appearances, Jesus appeared, and at this time around, Thomas was not there. And remember, Thomas was one of the 12 disciples. And so when he heard that Jesus had risen and that he was alive walking about, Thomas said something that we're going to dwell on from Scripture. And he is a man that gives a message that still remains relevant to us, even when he is called a doubter. And of course, many of us are represented among the 12 disciples. And so when we talk about them, it's something that actually we take as a very, very serious message. I've already said Thomas was one of the apostles. Thomas was one of the disciples. And he was all over the place. Jesus appeared and he was not there. And so I just want to mention a few things first before we enter into the doubting bit. Because he is not very, very popular, but there are some statements that he made. The statements that remain very relevant to us as believers in the church today. Tradition states that actually he was the evangelist that went and evangelized, and evangelized India. And like the others went, Paul and Peter going places. Now Thomas has been mentioned as one that rolled the other side and went to India and preached the gospel of Christ there. And so that's very important, meaning that like Thomas was an evangelist. And so... But of course, actually, many people know him as the doubting one. But we are going to dive into that and see how does it help us. But like I've already said, a few things that actually Thomas said and did that bring us a message of salvation. When we read John chapter 11, verse 16, you see Jesus talks about, I mean, the Bible talks about the resurrecting the man called Lazarus, the man that had died. And Jesus talks of going to heal to raise him from the dead and they're on the journey going. Now, Thomas, in chapter 11, he mentions something that actually critical that is crucial for us as a church. In chapter 11, verse 16, the Bible says that Thomas, one of them, said, who is called, they give him his other, his other name called a twin. That was a twin, Didymus, in the other language. And said to his fellow disciples, which is very important for us, let us also go and die with him. And of course, there are many, many interpretations about that. But he proposes to them, let us go. And remember, this was Jesus' last journey to Jerusalem. And indeed it was, because after Jesus reached Jerusalem, he never went anywhere else, and that was the last lap of his life, and he died there. And so when he says, let us go and die with him, you know, he made a proposal that actually remains good for us. You see, because we have to cling to Jesus Christ, he knew Jesus was on his last trip, and he was on his way to the cross. And so let us go, he proposed to them. And so the other disciples, well, they moved along with him. And so Thomas makes a statement that moves us, that when we offer ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ, we should be able to go along. And Jesus does mention that anyone who follows me, that actually deny, deny yourself, that actually even anything else, and be one that actually... Um, up to death, 
up to death. And Jesus Christ gives us an opportunity through Thomas to make a statement going along with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, one other thing that actually Thomas mentions that gives us a statement of faith is in John 14, 5. And this is when Jesus had talked about, I'm the way, the truth. I mean, this is before he could say that. And Thomas was a willing one. So he went along with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he asked so many questions as a doubter possibly. And these questions revealed something very, very great. It is for you and for me. And so when Jesus said that I'm going to the Father, you too will come. Thomas asked the question in John chapter 15, 14, verse 5. And he said, the question that he asked after Jesus had mentioned that he was going, so Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Now in verse 6, brethren, Thomas's question gives us a milestone verse in the Bible. Maybe some of us think that actually maybe Jesus wouldn't have said this, but because Thomas ignited it, and so Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, this man, Thomas, whom we're talking about, for me, he means a lot because, because of his energizement, because of the questions that he asked, Jesus made a statement. John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so this is actually good for us as a Christian believers that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And actually that's, that's what sets Christianity apart with that we are the people that know the way and we live on this life here on earth. Simply, we agonize, we die, we suffer, but we know time comes that when we leave this earth where we are suffering through the way, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, we go to the Father. So from these man, Thomas, Jesus gives us the assurance that he's the way, the truth, and the life. And so, friends, we benefit. I benefit. You too benefit from this. Now, as he, Jesus dies, as Jesus is buried, as Jesus rises, this is when doubt set, sentiments come about. And we read in chapter 20, verse 24, 25, when the other apostles and the disciples had told Thomas that had seen the Lord, this is when he said, until I touch, until I feel, until I see, this is when I, so he wanted the proof. He wanted the proof like many of us do want proof. When your child goes to school and she tells you that I have passed, as a parent, you want proof. Where is the report? You know, someone goes and says, I have got a job. Yes, you want proof. Yes, where is the appointment later? And this, this, these are things of life. These are things of life. Proof. And many of us do that and because you need proof to be sure that it is true. And so, since Thomas wanted it, he got it. He wanted it, he got it. And so, friends, this is for me and for you, that when we need something, and remember the Lord Jesus Christ says, ask and it will be given to you. Knock and it will be opened to you. Seek and you'll find. Now Thomas, you know, concretizes that statement, ask and you'll receive. So because he needed the proof until Jesus came around and he looked around and Jesus appeared and he called him Thomas and he asked him, push your finger here and he touched it. And this is when he said, yes, my Lord and my God. As we read in this John chapter 20, the, the book that actually we're dealing with now. Now, Thomas represented us. Now, when he said, until I see, the Lord Jesus Christ made a statement that helps you and me. Because we were not there when Jesus rose, 
We were not there when Jesus lived his earthly life. We were not there even the 40 days that we're talking about. We are living thousands of years later. But listen to what Jesus says. Happy are those who believe without seeing. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. And this is John chapter 20, beginning verse 29 there. That actually, blessed are those who believe without seeing. Now, we who are here, you and I, my brother, my sister, this is our statement. Because we were not there, we were not there, and we were not there. But Thomas says this, and Jesus makes this statement, blessed are those. Now, blessed are you. Blessed am I. That even when we were not there, even when we didn't see, even when we didn't touch, even when we didn't feel the Lord Jesus Christ in the physical form, we who believe without seeing him physically, Jesus pronounces, blessed are you. So friends, this is a message that is so, you know, concrete for me. It's so wonderful for me. It's so wonderful for you. So the man Thomas, like any other disciple, Peter, people know him, and the Bible talks about him as the one that denied him, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thomas, I mean, Judas Iscariot, the Bible talks about him as the one that betrayed the Lord Jesus Christ. And others took off, ran, literally, and hid themselves. Now, Thomas is well known as a doubter. Now, for us who are living in this generation now, the Bible gives us these examples to give us the hope, to give us the courage, that even when you have doubted here and there, you know that the Lord, there's a way the Lord Jesus Christ dealt with doubters. And so if you have a child, if you have a, a junior, you have anybody who is a doubter, Jesus gives us a way to go about that. But the thing is, we have a message from this man, Thomas, who remains a yardstick for us. He remained an evangelist. He remained the one that gospel about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So my brother, my sister, this message of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the appearances that he made, the talks that he gave, the evidences that he produced, they are the ones that encourage us in the scripture to remain focused. And now, for me, the two verses stand out. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Who caused it? Thomas asked the question, how do we reach there? Jesus gave him the solution, the answer. And one other question, when he said, until I see, until I touch, Jesus pronounced that blessed are those who believe without seeing. And so for us who are in this generation, who, have, who, never, who were never there, it is our, you know, it's the one that concretizes our faith, our blessings flow from him because it's a matter of believing in your heart and you receive those blessings, you receive God's favor. So my brother, my sister, I just want to wish you God's blessings that as we think about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, he gives another chance. Thomas was given another chance. Peter was given another chance. The men and women who were around were given another chance to see, to feel the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter was given another chance even when he went fishing. But when another chance, Jesus asked him three questions. He was given another chance. And so I pray that God gives us another chance as men and women who are living in this generation. We are not worthy, but God loves us. God cares about us. God kept looking about, looking for us, and he'll keep looking for you. He'll keep encouraging you. He'll keep speaking a word of hope to you. He encouraged Thomas. He encouraged Peter. May he encourage you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.